you know, one of the other things that we're hearing reports of is just the confusion and panic during that time from residents who felt like the roadblocks that were had been set up by MPD during those times uh, to help funnel people in a different direction, you know, and, and many going into Front Street area. Uh, knowing what you know now, do you believe that that was the right move uh, to funnel people in? And, and I know it's difficult because there's an investigation that's continued to go on. Yeah. Uh, but how do you respond to those who say that, you know, that the roadblocks may have also played a part in some of the pandemonium that existed during that time? I think everybody in the field were doing their best to save lives. Every single person in there did whatever they did in, a, in what they thought was saving a life. You know, this was such a fluid and dynamic situation to know that a road is clear one second and then there's a tree on it the next second uh, or a pole. Um, and they say, well, I thought you told me it was clear and now it's not clear. Uh, because and then other places that um, I, I know people there were heroic acts of people during that time um, you know if we're going to ask this question it's probably going to be at what moment in time what what part where were we because there's again there was so much happening um, around there as far as I can tell uh, what was going on uh, but I'm confident that everybody had tried their best whether they were the firefighters uh, the citizens there were citizens who were helping each other uh, traffic, I don't know that anything was a roadblock as much as it was a sort of a, I want to say a checkpoint or an area saying, just so you know, this is what's ahead or you may not want to go this way, you may want to go that way. Those decisions were made in a split second. Um, yeah, I think we know a lot more now than we did then. But while it was happening, which is what I think we, we should judge people's conduct on is as it was happening. Um, I'm very happy that we have an after action report being done by the police department, being done by the fire department, and of course by agencies including Congress. And so that's, that's what should happen in some way. This should never happen again. Um, and so there should be, we should, we should absolutely find out uh, where all the areas that we can improve in and how that can happen. Yeah, one of those areas that has received a lot of scrutiny is the decision not to sound those sirens. Uh, Herman and Daya in that press conference stood by that decision. We heard the governor saying that he wishes the sirens would have been sounded. Did Mr. and Daya discuss that decision with you before he talked publicly about it in the press conference? And, and do you agree with that decision? I wish we had done everything within our power to let people know what was happening. Um, I don't speak for, for Herman Andaya and, and I mean, he is free to state his opinion about what decision was made and whether he supports that decision. That wasn't something we talked about. Uh, I'm not sure if he was expecting that be asked that question or not. Uh, but that was, that was the answer he gave and, and so be that. But if you're asking me. Uh, you know, the mayors and the governor, we've, we've met since this has happened, and we've already implemented uh, new policies and responses to that. Now, previous to that, um, you know, if you talk to someone like Daryl Oliveira, who was a fire chief as well as the head of uh, the uh, civil defense over on the Big Island, uh, he would tell you that in every wildfire he had ever been in, they had never sounded an alarm in his experience. Um, so, you know, past practice, being whatever it was, um, policies that are written, whether people follow them or not. I think what's important now going forward is for people to know that uh, we will do everything we can to make sure that our people are 